This is code.org, and that's good because I see a bunch of code. All right, let's go out. In my neighborhood.java, instantiate, ooh, fancy words, a painter object called my painter. All right, guys, don't let this language scar you. Instantiate is just to make an instance of something. We're just going to create it in code. So you know the word instance or instant, you know instant. Instance is just, just one occurrence, one instance of something. An instance is a single occurrence. Teeny tiny. All right. That all being said, we need to make one. So to do that, no, don't forget the object has to be instantiated before it can be used. Make sure to instantiate your painter object in the right place. So I'm going to do this on line seven. Why seven? Line six is a comment. We've been seeing these. Comments are just for people. Computers skip over it, the slash slashy stuff. All right. I'm also going to click show me how because I know they give us a bit of an example. An object in is instantiated using the following syntax. Syntax is fancy language for code grammar. Okay, so I'm actually going to copy this. This is not going to work at all, but I'm going to go ahead and paste this on line seven and hit run. It's going to not be pleased with me. We couldn't compile. That's because they're not just providing us every tiny little thing. We're going to need to think some. So class name, there isn't anything called class name. What do they tell us? We need to instantiate a painter object. And it's a bit weird to wrap your mind around this, but there is a file somewhere called painter.java. They're not showing it to us. It's kind of mean, but that's what they're asking us to do. So the class name instantiate a painter object. Okay, so the class name is the type of object, and our type of object is painter. And now, what do they want us to call it? Instantiate your painter object, object called my painter. So, where it says object name, that's where we put my painter, because that's what the object is called. No space and nothing like that. But notice the P in my painter is capitalized. I will leave this equal sign, and I'm going to leave new. Now, let's think about class name. Okay. So again, we don't have anything called class name. We know that. We changed out class name at the beginning. What we want them to do, though, is not create a new class name, right? We need a new painter object. So we have to actually replace this with the word painter. So what this should do now is, or what we're telling the computer at this point, first we say painter with the capital P. That says, hey, hey, you computer, we're going to create this new thing. What type of thing is it? It's a painter. It's a member of the painter class, right? This magic file we have somewhere. Now, what do I want to call my painter? Well, <laughs> my painter. I could call my painter Fred, by the way. Don't, because we are using it down there. But that's just the variable name. Now we tell the computer what it's going to equal. And what I want it to be equal to is a new painter. And this, the parentheses here, tell it to run some specific chunk of code that we're not seeing yet. So there's a little bit of trust here, but yep, create a new painter object, name it my painter, and run it the painter, the run, again, new painter constructor. And bam, we should be able to move our painter around the screen after that because we created them successfully. Let's give it a shot. Guys, there's a, woo, painter. There's a lot of fancy language around this if you're like Mr. Kaiser. I understood half of what you said. Watch it again, but then move on. We're going to see this working. We're going to get our hands dirty. And that's when you learn to code. So this is scary and it's intimidating. But if you kind of sort of understood teeny piece of this, trust me, you're rocking it. And I'm not kidding. All right. Let's keep uh, going.